I really and picked an inopportune time to, to put a mint in mint, my mouth. To chew the mint, too. Yeah. Just chew Go and swallow it. it. Yeah. Thank you. Ken. That's love. That's right. a, We've that's been working oh together a long Jesus time. Christ. It burns. Yeah, well, it's not really a Your mint. spit burns. <laughs> yeah, I have toxic uh, yeah. saliva. <laughs> It's a nice beginning. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it, it goes into what I was actually going to talk to you about, first of all, Paul, is because you have a sweet shop in New York, and that's what I wanted to know is, um, what is the sweet that you would give to a uh, Slimer to make him chill out and calm down? Oh. Calm down. Well, I think I'd probably, you know, give him some of those warheads yeah. that are the extreme sour ones, um, because I, I just want to see... His reaction. His re yeah. It would be, stop him dead, I think. It would just, I think he would. Is a, yeah, because they are pretty intense, extreme. Yeah. 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 yeah, and if you, a, a lot at once, yeah, is can do some yeah. damage. Yeah. He'll get quieten down in the corner for a little bit then. It'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. He seems he seems pretty tenacious. He might not be affected by it. Just go for it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you bring any in, in production at all for any of your castmates? Or because I saw on TikTok over the last few weeks, um, there's been a couple of people doing trends of going to the shop and getting the Paul's uh, choices. Really? Yeah. I gotta get on social media and find. <laughs> I think I need to update my choices because we have some new stuff that I really love. My favorite thing there is uh, a seasonal candy, which is a. a uh, Santa, you know, Father Christmas, as you say, uh, wow. a sour Santa. Um, that for the actually the last. That's your favorite one. It's my favorite oh. one, and for the last two years, uh, they didn't go into production. They stopped making it, and so m maybe if the producers of the sour Santas that supplied our store were are watching this, <laughs> sour Pauls, all year round. Oh, dream! I just would love to see. I just I hope they bring it back. Yeah. I think you might have a little bit of leeway, so you might be okay. Gotta get that guy on the, on the, on the horn. Yeah. Who are you going to call? The guy that's making <laughs> sour Santas and say, please, don't stop producing these. You're like, this is what I use my stardom for. I come in and I demand the nice food. <laughs> I tell you, I got to use it for something, right? I mean, yeah. it's uh, honestly, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the benefits. <laughs> yeah. Get those sour Santas back into production. Now, Finn, this... Um, the Ghostbusters franchise has actually been a beautiful part of your journey as a director um, as well because, of course, when you started, um, first of all, it was kind of just a beginning for your directorial debut and you actually shot that in the middle. Have you noticed a shift between uh, yourself as an actor but in the first film versus the second after you did go behind the lens? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm still learning so much, obviously, but I, I would say... It's done good things, but it's also done really bad things because now I'm so in my, in my head. Sometimes it's nice because I can, sometimes I'll see a scene like in my head, like I'll, I'll think about what I look like in the future on screen and go, God damn, you look so, like such an idiot right now. <laughs> like I'll think about the future of like what it'll look like, you know? Um, but I, no, yeah, I don't know. I think so. You did a great job with that movie. He's a terrific oh, director, a terrific actor, and a great director. So. Thanks. In the future, I think you're going to look great. You, you have to continue uh, to be a, a, a terrific director. Yeah. But that insecurity of oh god, I look like an idiot. That doesn't go away. No, no, I know. It does. I can. I can attest. But just hear, seeing it from the outside, like thinking about it from oh, what's right. this footage going to look like when they get into the, onto the dailies and go nope, yeah. no, no. Not that. No. Ooh, definitely not that yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. You're like, nice try. Why, but... is Paul, why is Paul eating this sour candy on this one? Why is there a Santa? It's July. Why, why, why is Paul so puckered on this take? <laughs> Paul's been eating a little too many, I think, sour Santas. <laughs> And like when you um, are taking on a film like this, of course we ha do have to talk about the original and like that. Do you still get nervous when you see the OGs walking in and like being on screen with you? Because even when I went in and I saw uh, Ecto One in the in the press room, I was like, "That's cool." <laughs> you know, it's the only thing you can say when yeah. you see things like this. It doesn't really go away that kind of enthusiasm and the I can't believe that I'm here in the room seeing yeah. this feeling. It is true. I feel the same thing when I see that Ecto-1. It's like, whoa, that's it. And also, you know, the Ecto-1 that we had in the movie, was it wasn't just built for that movie. It's been around. It was in the others, too, because mm -hmm. they're very complicated to make. Uh, they, you know, consist of parts that you don't make anymore. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know how many they had. Do I think I, they had two, I think, on this one. The first one, they, like, had one, and then they got a shell of, like, an old one and kind of had to remake remake one of them, but they put a Corvette engine into it so they could drive down. Oh, really? Did you know that? No. In this one, 
for all the stuff where it's going down the street, they put a Corvette engine in. And so that's just like what it is. Jeez, so man. it's just a really drivable just car. An insanely powerful car, but it, pro it probably isn't very practical. It probably overheats constantly. It is. It, did, it was hard to. It was hard to drive. It's, it's pretty tricky. I actually got to drive it. Which no, was, I'm very jealous of that. Yeah, I know. It was really unreal. Yeah. Um, and it, it does feel like like it drives like you would think it would drive. But to start <laughs> it, it even seems like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. Because normally you get in a car like that, and there's a key, and you turn it, and yeah. it's on the driving mast, and you turn it. like That doesn't exist. There's a thing down below. You have to pull. It's like a lot of different parts. It's almost like you're driving the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. And uh, and it, it seems like it would work because there's so many wires and boxes and things that yeah. that seem as if it, there there really are they really would work to capture. Ghosts. We would start those takes and they'd be like, "All right, action, Paul!" And it would be like we're about to start the car and go out, and it would just be like, "One sec." <laughs> yeah, it's it, it just it, it was a little, a little to start. temperamental. Yeah, and if it isn't warmed up, you got to really yeah uh, choke choke yeah. yeah. But you, there, there are moments as well that you could definitely even keep in the film of when, because the comedic moments of getting it to try and start, but yeah, I know, you know, right? Yeah, well, it's a kind of that's a classic. <laughs> if we had a director like that, <laughs> if we, if it right, this guy, right, right, right. Gil, yeah, Gil missed <laughs> opportunity, really blew it, yeah, really blew yeah, it, blew like it. the engine. <laughs> Yeah, nice. I'm talking to Ernie um, in a little bit. And the two, I heard a couple of interviews from um, you guys and that you actually focused on not having your phones in the room and actually talking to one another like normal human beings. Yeah. So now that you know so much more about your fellow castmates and about Ernie specifically, what question would you ask him? Oh, how long? Because Ernie would always have like those kind of like Tootsie Pops. He loves, yes, he's yes. got a real sweet tooth actually. Yeah, he does. Um, I would. Oh God, I love him so much. Yeah, he had like, every day he's like, I'm like, uh, that was just like treat for himself he, every day. Yeah. He, would, he would have a lollipop, but it's a Tootsie Pop, so like, you you know. Yeah, how many, sh should it be how many How looks? many looks does a, does a Tootsie Roll? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah what's get, the, get to the center. How many looks does it take to get this, this, to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Yeah. That's what you should ask him. I will. And okay. he'll be like, what are you talking about? How did you, about? no, 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 he'll know, <laughs> he'll know, he'll know. He'll be like, yeah, Paul and Finn. And that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was a very famous commercial back uh, in the day in the States where they would advertise those, and it, and it was how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie, to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Of a Tootsie Pop, and, and so. It's the perfect question. I, I have no idea. Uh, well, it all depends on if you if you lick it and suck it, then uh, it's a little shorter. I, I have no idea, but it's funny that they would remember it. Um, when I went on, sometimes I'll go through a period when I don't eat much, and the Tootsie Roll, I'm not doing a plug for Tootsie Roll, but it, uh, they, they're fairly low in calories, and they can fight the, you know, Cut the the hunger urge, but it's it's funny they remember that because yeah that. Uh... Of course, you must get recognized day in day out uh, for your roles. Um, is there a specific line that people uh, come up and say to you on the street? Well, it's 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 interesting in the first Ghostbusters, um, because the, the part had been cut down from what the original part was. Um, the guys all sort of came together and. Uh, and uh, and gave me a lot of the really good lines. So uh, over the years, uh, people still remember um, it's a big Twinkie. Uh, there's a steady paycheck in it. I believe anything you say. Uh, I've seen shit that'll turn you white. Um, uh, if someone asks if you're a god, you say yes. So all those lines, somewhere along the line, someone will uh, will come up and quote, you know. What's great is that uh, you'll never have to worry about memory or anything because people say it so often that you're like, well, I'm oh, going to yeah. remember that line every single day. <laughs> I love that. Well, when people um, watch a movie a lot, because I met some fans who, um, if they like a scene, they'll uh, remember every line on everybody's part. So they'll come up and tell me the whole film. And then you said this, and they said that, and I'm like, you know what? I know. <laughs> I saw the movie. <laughs> but, I was there. Yeah, I was there. You know? <laughs>